in general, dovetails are not my favorite join. I mean, that's probably because I'm pretty slow at cutting them by hand. It's not something that I've done over and over and over to get to the point where I'm really speedy at it, but they do look really cool and they're often seen as a mark of, of fine furniture and high level of skill. Now, the Panta Router takes some of that skill out of it, but it certainly makes it a lot easier and a lot faster. I'm able to get really accurate, clean fitting dovetails straight off the machine, which in a professional work environment means I might actually use them a little bit more. Otherwise I find, even though it's super enjoyable doing that hand tool work, I can't always afford to put it into my pieces. So having a machine like this really opens that up. All dovetails, all dovetail dronery consists of uh, pins and tails and they slot together to form an interlocking join that's strong and really pretty and the templates provided with the panther router allow you to cut both the pins and the tails with the same templates just by changing the route a bit it's pretty simple place to start with dovetails on the panther router as with any joinery anywhere is to figure out what stock you're using how big it is and everything kind of works off that so i've got some 12 mil stock here that i milled up out of some red gum it's about 70 millimeters wide every process on the route on the panther router starts by referencing the center of the width of these pieces so that you can place your fence in the right location. Now you can do that by measuring and then using the half scale ruler on the fence or you can just center mark using a marking gauge on your stock and then use that on the center line to set the fence exactly where it needs to be. Now for these dovetails both the pins and the tails will be cut in that way because both pieces are going to be flush on either edge. The next step is similar to most other dovetail operations by hand. You're going to actually mark out the dovetails, but you're not going to mark out every single angle like you would by hand. You just need to mark the main line that corresponds with the depth of that join. So on both pieces, if you want that nice and flush, this is 12 mil stock, that line will be 12 mil down. However, it is important that that actual line is a little bit deeper because you want these pieces to stick out so you can trim them back. If they sit too low, it's incredibly difficult, well, impossible to get that nice and flush because you've actually got a cavity there. I'll demonstrate with these stock pieces here. This is exaggerated, but this is way too low and you've got a big gap here that you can't clean up. Whereas if those pins were sticking up high, you can clean them up with a plane or some sandpaper or however you want to do that. So to mark that line, instead of setting my marking gauge at 12 mil, I've set it at about 12 and a half or 13 mil, and that will push the depth of that join a little bit deep, give me some material to plane off later. The next thing we need to do is set the location of these templates. Now, these uh, little triangle things are specifically the dovetail templates as provided by the Panther Router kit. They, uh, there are a number of them. For this particular join, I only need three. I think there are five or six of them, so you can do much wider joins. But in order to set that up, we're gonna first lock our piece of timber down to the bench, making sure that that line that we just scribed is over the bench by at least a centimetre to make sure that the router bit will not contact the aluminium. So, lock that down, and then we'll set the location of our templates from that timber. And the way that we do that is we center the very middle of this dovetail bit over the edge of the timber. And that means that the center of a pin will fall on the edge of the timber, which looks nice and is balanced on both sides and is strong. So. I'm going to loosen this template off because it was set for me. So now we can move it. We're going to place the bearing into the center of that template. So as we move the, road, the router motor, the template's also moving. We're going to bring the mechanism up to the edge of the timber. Make sure the center of the router bit is lined up with the edge of the timber. And then we can lock that template off. Check it. 
and then we can uh, do exactly the same thing on the other side making sure the center of that router bit is lined up with the edge of the timber and then tighten that off as well once you've done those two then you can set the position of your central template now depending on the width of the timber that you're working with you might have one or two if you've got two of them you just need to measure and make sure they're equal or you need to put them both one way or the other so that they're symmetrical if that's what you're after cutting symmetrical dovetails on the panther router is much easier than cutting asymmetrical dovetails and we're not going to go into asymmetrical dovetails at this stage but know that it is totally possible there's just another couple setup steps because I'm only using three of these templates, I just want to center this template. And I'm going to do that by using one of the backs of the bearing and putting it through the reference hole in the template that goes through the hole in the back of the template holder. That's the easiest way to make sure it's dead center. I've locked that off. Now the templates are in the correct position left to right. You also want to make sure that the template holder is in the correct position vertically. All you're trying to do here is make sure that the router bit is able to make it all the way through the timber up and down while the bearing is still fully engaged in the template. So in this case it looks like I need to drop this down just a fraction to make sure that it's fully engaged the whole time. The last thing we want to do is set the depth of that router bit. Now this is what is going to reference that scribe line that we scored earlier. We obviously want the bottom of the router bit to be on that scribe line. Now it's important that you're actually locking both depth stops, the forward one and the rear one, because you don't want this sliding backwards while you're cutting those tails. If it does, it's not going to be a true dovetail, it'll just tear out all of that mess. So we're going to line this edge of the router bit right up to that scribe line. Then I'm going to bring the forward depth stop and lock that off. And then I'm going to bring the rear depth stop and lock that off behind it so that this carriage cannot move forward or backwards. It can just move up and down through these templates. Now this is set up, we can do the pins. Now, you could definitely do a stack of pins. I'd recommend doing that. Um, you just work really slowly and gently through the timber. Don't ram the piece, the bit through the wood. It'll cause inaccuracies, but you can just move it slowly. Now, obviously, normally I'd be using the shroud, but for the demonstration purposes, it's nice for you guys to be able to see the router bit and what it's doing. So prepare for a bit of dust. Before I forget, when we're cutting these tails, the router bit is going to be traveling through the center of these templates. And then when we go to cut the pins, the router bit will then be traveling on the outside of these templates. And that's how most of the templates work, is one operation is done inside and one operation is done on the outside. ready to cut our pins. Now it's really handy to have cut a really short sample piece of stock that has those tails that we've just cut because you can use that to test your pins for fit while they're on the table. So this needs to be you know about 200 mil or so. If it's any longer it's actually going to bottom out on the table itself so it's nice to have a little short one. We'll be using that. Basically what we're going to do is you can transfer those tails onto the end grain of your timber just with a piece with pencil you'll use that to rough set 
the um, position of this template holder and then we will fine tune that. So the way it works is we don't move our templates at all left to right, but we move the template holder up and down. And what that does is it actually changes the tightness of the fit and it allows you to creep up on the perfect fit. You can set it tight initially and then just drop it down millimeter by millimeter until it's perfect. And those adjustments are more accurate than you might imagine because one millimeter of movement on here only equals half a millimeter of movement down here, but also because of the slope of the angle, it's, it's really minute and accurate. So I'll just transfer them now. Now that I can see that marked out, I'm going to place this on the table up against the fence, making sure that our scribe line is hanging over the edge, and I'm going to change the route a bit from a dovetail bit to just the 10 mil spiral bit, leave the bearing the same. Depending on the size of your dovetails, the bearing and router bit combination might change. So there's no point in me telling you exactly which one to use here, but for this, you know, the 10 mil bearing, it works across the board and my 10 mil router bit works as well. Okay, we'll clamp that onto the table. Put the bearing in, put the router bit into the machine. With the router bit in the machine and the bearing running along these templates, we're actually able to line it up with the end of the timber and see if the router bit is cutting into what should be our pins or if it's going to be uh, on the other side of the line and those pins are going to be way too large for the holes that are created. And then you can see how this adjustment, what difference that makes to your tightness. So get it close, I'd err on the side of those joints being way too tight and then creep up on it. Once you've set that, you don't need to set it again. You can cut all of your pins and it will be correct. The last thing you want to do is set the depth of the router bit. So again, you want to bring the router bit up to the line that you've scribed lock off the front depth stop, then lock off the rear depth stop, and then all cuts will just be done in a smooth way without moving the whole slider back and forth. So I cut those pins and I used the short tails reference like I mentioned to test fit while it was on the table. It was too tight so then I dropped the template holder down by about a millimeter, recut that same cut and got a really nice fit. So there's a lot of room, a lot of scope for getting that just perfect. You can get it to a hammer fit or you can get it a bit looser depending on what you need. Now, as intended, the pins and the tails stick out by about a mil or less, but it makes it nice and easy to clean up. So you'd go through and do all of your uh, pins in exactly the same way, and then you could fit up, you know, whatever it was that you were doing. This process can easily be done on much larger stock. You can set the arrangement of pins and tails in any way you want. They don't have to be evenly spaced. Uh, you can use a larger router bit for the dovetails as long as it has an 8 degree angle. Um, I had to end up using a 12 mil spiral bit, not a 10 mil as I mentioned. I just messed that up, but again, it'll depend on what material you're using and what router bit you're using for the dovetails. But, good clean dovetails, fairly simple. If you're familiar with the Panther router, basically all of these setups uh, are very similar, whether you're doing a standard uh, mortise and tenon or finger joints or dovetails, they 
you know, basically all follow more or less the same steps. It's a very accurate machine, it's so versatile, it can do a whole bunch of different joins and it does them really well. So, you know, for me that allows me to do uh, dovetails when I really don't have the skills to do them by hand. So, you know, that's a plus for me. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. There'll be some links below to find out more information about the Panta router. So check them out and we'll see you next time.